Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this effect. <laughs> In DaVinci Resolve. Stick with me. So today's video comes at the request of one of my longtime supporters of my channel, uh, Sardar Hamad Sadaze. I hope I didn't butcher your name, I probably did. This is primarily a green screen effect. Uh, obviously I have this green screen behind me and this is what I used in order to shoot this. Some quick tips about green screen to start with. Uh, if you do get a green screen, make sure that you iron it or steam it or get rid of all these wrinkles. You see all these wrinkles here? That's gonna make it more difficult to key out your green screen and replace it with another image. So any of those wrinkles, they're just, it's a, a variation in the color and it's gonna be that much harder to key out. Another point worth noting is the best green screens are ones that are lit uniformly. Right now I have this light mostly just for a nice background. If I wanted to do this properly, I would have another light on the other side and probably not this style of light. Something more like a, a bar light that would be a, kind of a long tube light to uniformly light it from this side and the other side. And then also you want a little bit of separation between yourself and the green screen. So the further you can get away from the green screen, uh, the better for the overall effect. So uh, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. This can be done with any editing software. Uh, I'm using DaVinci Resolve for, uh, other than it's my primary editor, uh, it's also free. So any of you can download the program and try it out. All you need is a cell phone, green screen, maybe a few lights, and you can try to pull off this effect yourself. Or even better, get creative and do different effects using this same methodology. Um, so basically we have two clips here. There's me talking, just the talking head scene, and the green screen scene of me kind of stepping out around myself. And so I would say that 90% of this effect comes from just having a green screen that works well with the other footage. So because I knew I was going to be stepping around myself, when I shot the green screen, I had a marker and I, you know, I kind of walked around the marker of what myself would be. So it made it look more realistic that I'm actually stepping around myself. So the first thing we gotta do is find a good place to break the talking head scene uh, where I can kind of step around myself. I always like to kind of goof around and kind of make fun of myself. You can't be too serious all the time. So I usually find some really unflattering point like right there to uh, freeze the frame. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the original of not where I haven't freeze the frame. So I'm gonna push Alt, right click, drag up. And so now I have a copy of that original clip. Sorry about any of the noise in the background. Obviously it's, we're in isolation so my kids are uh, walking around in the hallways. Gets a little noisy, but uh, this is life. We're all in this boat together, right? Um, okay, so what I need to do is freeze this clip right at that embarrassing moment when my eyes are closed so that I can laugh at myself. So you're gonna go, uh, you're gonna right click on the clip, change clip speed, and freeze frame. And now we have just, we have moving underneath, and then the clip freezes, bam. And then I'm gonna walk around from outside of that. So let's line these clips up to the way Okay, so I've now got these clips. So let's move that guy a little bit forward where it's gonna be, and there it is. So what we need to do now is go and get a good green screen key for the green screen scene. So if we go into the color panel, we have our different clips down here. If you don't see them, you can go up here and hit the clips button and that'll pop those up. And then we have our nodes. What you need to know about nodes is they work the same way as layers if you're using uh, After Effects or any, any Adobe product. So it's not as intimidating as it looks. It starts from the left and heads to the right. Anything you do in the left nodes will affect the nodes on the right. So first thing we gotta do is add a new node. So you can right click on this node, say add serial node. 
Uh, I'm gonna undo that. There's a, the, a better way to do that is to go Alt S and that'll create a new node. So we need to create a garbage mat here, it's called, to just eliminate any, anything that's not green screen. I'm gonna go to my power windows down here and select a free draw tool and just draw around the areas that I want to get rid of. I'm going to cut myself in half there um, and because I'm going to be stepping out from myself so I'll be covered, uh, myself will be covering myself which will make sense shortly. Everything that shows up gray is going to be see-through. If, if it doesn't show up for you then you can click this magic wand button and when it's on it's going to show you exactly what's happening within whatever node you're working with. Right now I have myself uh, stepping out, so it looks like I'm gonna have to refine that a little bit right over here and pull. So if I drop down on the window itself, I can select the power window and, and, and edit that again so that I get all of my body that pops out there. That looks pretty good. So now I can just focus on the green screen itself. So we're gonna use we're going to be in the same node that we were using before and we're going to select our dropper tool and this is where we're going to select the alpha channel based on the green in this image. Oh, I got to also take that sucker out right there, that little weight. So let's go back to our power windows and just add another one right there. Bring that in. That looks pretty good. So back to the dropper. So if I do one click on here, it's gonna select uh, the, the color that I wanna select. But what actually I have found to work better, I'm gonna uh, control undo that, control Z, is if I actually click and drag, it's going to have a better selection of all of the different var variations of green. And so that's a good start. And so now I'm going to refine that by going down to my qualifier and adding this plus and select this last little bit of green. That looks pretty good actually. But as you'll notice, it's inverse to what I want. So go down here and reverse that. So now it's just myself and you can kind of have a better picture of what we're actually qualifying here. And so we have a little bit of here to clean up. So let's keep this on the plus region and add all of this stuff to my selection. I'm going to refine this down here with my width. Maybe bring that a little bit wider. Ooh, that's done a really good job there. As I go even wider, it seems to be taking out the green in my fingers. And that looks actually pretty good. It's going to be tricky to get any more but let's see if we can oh yeah look we pulled even more out by playing with that green slider so what you'll find as you do more and more of these uh, green screen keys is it's it's very iterative you just have to kind of play around with the controls move everything around and as you do it more you just get better at where to look so so that looks pretty good to me I've got most of the green out so now I'm going to refine that even further. Ooh, I like that blurry spot. It's going to really give me a good, good idea of the green that I need to eliminate still. So I'm going to play with these, the last bit of controls, still within my selection node. So this is still in the qualifier and the power windows that I've done. And I'm just going to play with these finesse uh, tools now. So I'll denoise this a little bit. I, you know what, I actually don't think I need to denoise it. Uh, clean black, I just usually like to play around with all of these and see if it's doing anything. Clean black looks pretty good if I turn that up a little bit. And then I think I'm going to want to, in this in and out ratio, one will take it out, add more green, and one will take it inside of the image. So I actually want to take this a little bit inside all right, so I think that is pretty good. It's not perfect, obviously, and you can work on these for hours to get a better green screen, but it's not bad. 
there's not much green popping out. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working with now. So from here, what we need to do is size it appropriately so that I can actually pop out around myself. All right, so that's what it's going to look like. So we need to zoom it in a little bit and position it properly. So I'll just line up my face there and then make it to about the same size but a little bigger because I am coming out from around myself and then moving towards the camera. Uh, and let's see what happens as I, so I'm walking out. I want to be fully, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to come back in. Perfect. That's exactly what I want it to be. So now the only thing left to do is create a mask around my talking headshot so that I'm actually walking around myself. So I need to copy that bottom clip. So I'm going to push alt and drag that guy up, place it where I want it to be. And I'm only going to, I'm only going to keep what I need. So, uh, as I pop out of myself, I'm going to trim it to right about there. That's really all I need. Right when my arm right here clears my other arm, boom, right there. So I'm going to trim this clip all the way back to there, turn that guy on. And so you'll see because it's on top of the previous layer, it's going to be covering myself, covering myself, covering myself, and then I'm going to pop out. So what we need to do is do a little bit of keyframing on that upper image. So that this becomes invisible and I can see myself pop over. So we're going to go back to the color tab and we are going to create a new node and another power window. I'm going to turn on my selection. Uh, I'm going to turn on my magic wand so I can see what I'm selecting and I'm going to click this free draw tool again and just draw on the place that I want to trim. So I'm going to trim along my body here. And that's probably good already. And I'm going to make this all invisible. Okay, so you can see that this actually uh, did the opposite of, I of what I wanted and this would make this whole thing invisible. So in order to change that, you can just slick on this, select this inverse tool. Right, be right beside the freehand tool is this inverse and that will show me what I want to create there. And so that should finish up this effect, really. It's not that difficult. Here we go. I'm going to What's going on here? Oh, that's right, because we didn't, we haven't added uh, an alpha output channel. So we haven't told DaVinci Resolve that we want that to be invisible. So we can turn off our magic wand. It doesn't see anything. Add an alpha output channel. And voila! Okay, so from there, let's head back to our edit page and see what it looks like. So here I am talking, it freezes, I step out from myself, and then we go back. So obviously it's not perfect. Uh, it looks like I have a bit of size issue with the front image that steps around myself. I just kind of pop up out of nowhere. Bam! What happened there? So let's refine that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is keyframe my position in. Obviously I need to lower this so I'm popping out and I want me to be a completely invisible right now. So I'm going to move that over like this. Let's see how that looks. So I'm popping out. Oh yeah, that looks way better. That's all I needed to do. Boom. Magic. You cloned yourself. <laughs> Oh! I hope you learned something from this. If you're still watching or you enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.